Julian Alvarez has definitely become one of the best talents in football. At the age of 23 as well, he's already accomplished almost everything in the sport, with him winning the treble with Manchester City and winning the World Cup with Argentina. So how did Julian Alvarez come out of nowhere in Argentina to exploding on the scene in Europe and also with his country's national team? Well, let's take a look at the rise of Julian Alvarez. Alvarez was born on January 31st, 2000 in the small town of Calchín in Argentina. From a very young age, Julian fell in love with football, and by the time he was 5 years old, he was already showing his talent with the ball at his feet. In fact, he was so good with the ball that it seemed like he had more than two legs controlling it, hence why his brothers, Rafael and Agustin Alvarez, gave him the nickname The Little Spider, which Alvarez still pays homage to that nickname today. Additionally, as a kid, Alvarez quickly fell in love with River Plate and Barcelona, with those two being his favorite teams. However, when he was 11, Julian could have been playing for the rivals of Barcelona, Real Madrid. The sporting director of Real Madrid, Ramon Martinez, found out through Argentinian scouts about Julian Alvarez, and with that, he was invited to play a tournament for Real Madrid in Spain. Additionally, Alvarez impressed Real Madrid in the U tournament as well, and Madrid were ready to sign him to their academy. Sadly though, because of the new FIFA rules at the time, Alvarez was too young to be signed. The rules state that players under the age of 16 couldn't move clubs without their parents, and at that stage for the Alvarez family, it just wasn't possible for them to leave everything in Argentina and move to Spain. Hence why Real Madrid were unable to sign Julian Alvarez, and is also the reason why he went back to playing in Argentina. Throughout Alvarez's teenage years, he was trialing for many Argentinian clubs, like the famous Boca Juniors and Argentinos Juniors for example. However, when he turned 15 years old, he got an offer to join the River Plate Academy, and since that was his boyhood club that he loved, he accepted their offer. Then, by the time he was 18 years old, he impressed the River Plate coaches so much that they moved him up to the senior squad. The coach of River Plate at the time, Marcelo Gallardo, liked what he was seeing from Alvarez in training, so he decided to give him his debut in October 2018 in a game against Aldo Civi. A couple months later, in the Como Bowl Leaper the Doors final, essentially the Champions League of South America, River Plate were battling with Boca Juniors for the trophy, the first time the two Buenos Aires clubs faced off against each other in the final. The game had to be played in the Santiago Bernabeu due to safety concerns arising from an attack on the Boca Juniors team bus. That's when, in pretty much the biggest Leaper the Doors final of all time, Julian Alvarez got his Leaper the Doors debut, where River Plate later won 5-3 on aggregate, meaning that Alvarez got his hands on his first professional trophy, the Como Bowl Leaper the Doors title. The Copa Leaper the Doors trophy as your first title is a pretty insane flex, I'm not gonna lie. Anyways, in the next couple of seasons, Julian Alvarez would only continue to grow as a footballer and eventually become a starter for the club. In the 18-19 campaign, Julian Alvarez got 3 goals and 4 assists in 16 games. Then, in the 19-20 season is when Alvarez became a starter like I was saying, with him scoring 9 goals and getting 6 assists in 32 games. Throughout these two campaigns, Alvarez continued to show the River Plate coach that he was extremely diverse in the attack, with him having the ability to play as a striker, a second striker, a left winger, or even a right winger. Not only that, his pace, agility, and shooting from range was exceptional and made him a handful for defenders of the opposing team. This is when the Little Spider, Alvarez's nickname, was cut to the spider from the River Plate fans, and is also why Julian kept on celebrating with those iconic Spider-Man fingers, and also the mask of course. Then in the 2021 and 2122 season is when Julian Alvarez truly broke out to the mainstream media, with him backing 24 goals and 15 assists in 46 games in the 2021 season, and 18 goals and 6 assists in 26 games in the 21-22 season. With stats like these, it's only natural that clubs all around Europe were taking note of him, especially the likes of Juventus and Atletico Madrid, who were very interested in signing the young Argentinian. However, on January 31st, 2022, it was Manchester City who beat out the other European clubs and signed striker Julian Alvarez for a fee of 17 million euros on a five and a half year deal, with him being loaned back to River Plate for half a season. With him staying put at River Plate until July, Alvarez delivered some amazing moments to the fans, by scoring six goals in a single match for River Plate and an 8-1 win against Alianza Lima in the Copa Libertadores. Overall, in the four years he spent with the River Plate first team, he scored 54 goals for the club and won six trophies with them, like the Copa Libertadores and also the Argentinian League as well. Then, before the 22-23 season, Julian Alvarez was finally with Manchester City, a club that was so rich in depth, but were missing the man up top, a number nine. However, before Julian Alvarez even got to England, this problem was already solved, with Man City signing Erling Haaland for Borussia Dortmund over the summer. With Haaland being one of the biggest names in Europe, it's only natural that this signing was going to overshadow the signing of Julian Alvarez, who was also a top talent. However, since he was from South America, while Haaland's been playing in Europe, City fans were more hyped up for Haaland since they knew a lot more about him. Despite this, Julian Alvarez put his head down and put in the work to help City in their unbelievable season. Alvarez showed his talent right away in the first game for Man City against Liverpool in the Community Shield. Despite City losing, Alvarez bagged his first goal for the club, showing the fans that Holland was going to be the only one that's scoring this season. However, besides this, Alvarez was only mainly getting to play games in the domestic cup competitions and sometimes the Champions League. He rarely got to start in the prep. However, his first time would eventually come against Nottingham Forest, where he would score a brace in a 6-0 win. Regardless, by the time November came around, Alvarez wasn't playing as much football as he would like to, but he was taking his chances, with him bagging 7 goals before the 2022 World Cup arrived. Due to Alvarez being a top Argentinian talent, it was only obvious that he was going to be selected for the 2022 World Cup. However, at first, Galoni, the manager of Argentina, was only planning on seeing him as a super sub, with him viewing Lautaro Martinez as the clear starter at the striker position. 
position for the tournament. Two games into the tournament though, Scaloni knew he had to change things around. Why? Real quick before we get on with that though, please remember to subscribe to the channel. I really appreciate it and it means a lot, so thank you. And also if you guys can, follow my Twitter and Instagram, both at Nabuto, if you just want to hear my thoughts on football games, transfers, and overall just to get to know me more. So if you want to, feel free to hit me up with that follow. Thank you. Back to topic, in the first game against Saudi Arabia, Argentina were shockingly defeated 2-1 in the opening game, with Julian Alvarez on the bench and Lautaro starting. Then in the next game against Mexico, although Argentina bounced back and won 2-0, they struggled to create good goal scoring opportunities and it was only due to Lionel Messi being the GOAT that Argentina finally broke through. So with Scaloni realizing that something wasn't working, he decided that he needed to bench Lautaro Martinez and start Julian Alvarez. And this ended up being the right choice, because despite Messi's missed penalty, Argentina dominated the game and won 2-0 against the Polish, and Julian Alvarez even scored the second goal of the match, scoring his first ever World Cup goal. Therefore in the knockout rounds, Scaloni stuck with Julian Alvarez and selected him to start again. Julian made sure that the manager did not make a wrong choice, because due to his relentless pressing, Julian Alvarez got another goal at the tournament, helping defeat Australia 2-1 in the round 16. It was beginning to show that Messi and Julian Alvarez were forming one hell of a partnership, with Alvarez doing a better job at making runs and freeing up space for Messi to do his thing. This amazing duo became even more evident in the semi-finals against Croatia, in which Argentina completely dominated them, defeating the Croatians 3-0. That doesn't paint the entire picture though, because in the game, Julian Alvarez won a penalty while outrunning the Croatian defenders, in which Messi easily slotted in. Then in an amazing solo run, Julian Alvarez scored the second of the match, and with Messi's magic, Alvarez scored a third to top it all off, and sent Argentina back into the World Cup final. Then in the final, despite it not being Alvarez's best performance, Argentina made history and defeated France on penalties to win the World Cup. Overall, Alvarez was a standout for Argentina at this competition as well, and also an unlikely hero for the country, stepping up when Argentina needed him the most and scored 5 goals. After the 2022 World Cup, there were many eyes on Julian Alvarez, with him making his name known to the world after these performances. Alvarez then continued his World Cup form for Man City, with Pep Guardiola trusting him more to take part in the games. Overall in all competitions, Alvarez played in 49 games, scoring 17 goals and 5 assists. Not bad, considering that Alvarez was coming off the bench for the majority of the season. That's also not painting the entire picture as well, because Alvarez's goals played a huge part in Man City's overall success in the 22-23 campaign. First, with Man City being so behind Arsenal in the Premier League title race, Man City needed an almost perfect record if they wanted any chance to catch up. Then from mid-March, Julian Alvarez took part in almost every game, and with Man City catching up to Arsenal, with them defeating them twice, Julian Alvarez's goal against Fulham, and also him scoring the only goal in a 1-0 win over Chelsea, the Premier League title was then officially retained by City, having an extraordinary comeback in the title race. That's not it though, because Alvarez's two goals and one assist in the quarterfinals against Burnley helped City make it all the way to the final against Manchester United, their rivals, where Gunnar One's two goals would help City do the domestic double. The job was not finished though. You're up too old. Job's not finished. Job finished? I don't think so. Because Man City were in the Champions League final against Inter Milan after defeating Real Madrid in the semis 4-0, with one of those goals coming from Alvarez as well. In spite of this, Alvarez did not play in the final, but City got the breakthrough late in the game and defeated Inter Milan 1-0, which helped them win their first ever Champions League trophy. Alvarez didn't play in the game, like I said, but his three goals and two assists in the Champions League campaign proved to be pivotal in their run to win the trophy, which also means that Julian Alvarez became only the 10th player in history to win a Champions League trophy and a World Cup trophy in the same season. Anyhow, with Man City winning the Premier League, FA Cup, and Champions League, City became only the second English club to win the treble, after Manchester United of course, meaning Julian Alvarez won the best trophies he could have in his first season with City. Regardless though, by the age of 23 years old, Julian Alvarez has already won the biggest trophies of football. He's won the Copa Libertadores, the Premier League, the Champions League, and even the World Cup. He's won it all. He also extended his contract with Man City this year as well, so maybe he really does want that Carabao Cup trophy. Overall though, Alvarez is still a very young top player, and his growth is going to be very fun to watch in these next few years. Anyways, if you enjoyed this video, please remember to subscribe to the channel, I would really appreciate it. And also if you guys could, please follow my Twitter and Instagram, the links are in my YouTube description. And last but not least, if you want to learn about a footballer who could have been the best ever, Adriano, you definitely want to check out this video right here, you won't regret it.